All right, one of the best parts of this year has been listening to some of the things Mr. Davis does that are a little bit different than what I do. And I think between us, you're going to get sometimes um, double the amount of ideas. And I think it's great. So he went through, just want to review this super fast. He went through GABA, glutamate, and endorphins. Um, I love his idea of somebody gabbing. You want to shut them up. My mnemonic is Officer Gabba. I personify him. And Officer Gabba comes in to your party and he shuts it down. Officer Gabba walks in and he says, uh, you don't you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. So I personify Officer Gabba. He shuts down the party. He inhibits everything. He's a total drag. Glutamate, he says, when you see your mate, you get excited. <laughs> My mnemonic is when you see glutes, you get excited. And if you don't know what a glute is, that's great. But if you know what a glute is, well, I'll tell you. It's that uh, gluteus maximus muscle on your backside. So, uh, uh, Mr. Davis is very chaste and, and, and kind, and he thinks of seeing the mate, and I think of seeing glutes. Either way, you get excited when you see your mate or your mate's glutes. Uh, that would be fine, too. And then endorphins. I love the two words, endogenous morphine. Um, when you see orphans, you will see, um, if you just add the M to the be beginning of orphan, you'll see it's morphine. So endogenous meaning inside, morphine on the inside. So all endorphins are are morphine that already exists inside of you. And then Mr. Davis did a great job of um, going back through the neuron, which is great because we had some issues on the quiz that we took on Tuesday. I just wanted to make sure we're all good. Um, so we'll keep reviewing. We'll keep being recursive. I love that idea. Now let's take a look at the nervous system. So we've already looked at the neurons in the brain. And by the way, you have neurons throughout your body. You have one neuron that goes the entire length of your leg, one that goes the entire length of your spine. Some of them are long, some of them are short. There are all different kinds of neurons. That's your nervous system, nervous neurons. So let's look at the different kind of neuro, uh, uh, systems that your nerves use. So we have the nervous system. So anything that has a neuron is part of the nervous system. So we, we let's look over here. We've got the central, the brain and the spinal cord. This is running right down the center. This is really the important stuff, obviously. And then notice it stops. So all we have for the nervous system on that side, well, actually it would be on this side for you, um, is the brain and spinal cord. Then we look at the peripheral. You think of peripheral vision. It means on the outside. So central is down the middle, peripherals on the outside. And notice the yellow goes to all these other spots here. So this is the central. Notice that's colored here. And all the rest of the stuff is your peripheral. Okay, so all these neurons that go out to the other parts of your body. And we have two types. We have the somatic. Soma means body. Soma means body. So like chromosome means colored body. So when you stain a cell, the, the chromosomes get colored. So um, you just remember uh, psychosomatic. If you have a psychosomatic illness, it means your psycho is causing a problem with your soma. Your brain is causing a problem in your body. Soma means body. So your somatic nervous system controls your body. If I punch you in the face, that's the somatic nervous system. If you kick me in the shins, somatic nervous system. Okay. Then the other part of the peripheral is autonomic. And when you think autonomic, just think automatic. It's something that doesn't, um, it can't be controlled by, you can't say, well, I'll give you an example of the autonomic nervous system. You can't say, I really want my heart to beat faster right now. I'd like to digest a little bit more quickly so I can eat again. You can't do it. That's stuff that you don't have control over. It is completely automatic. So that is the autonomic. So you see, we have the peripheral nervous system out in your body. And by the way, you can't say, if you've ever been nervous, you can't say, I would like my um, hands to stop sweating and being cold because I'm nervous that's autonomic so you can clench your fist which is your somatic nervous system but your autonomic nervous system might make your hands cold and clammy and you can't do anything about it because it's automatic within the autonomic you will see it branches out here there are two parts there's the sympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system if I pull out a well I, you know if I pulled out say um, a slingshot and I pointed it right at your face you'd go like that that's your sympathetic nervous system. Your pupils would dilate. Um, your blood would run to the big muscles in your body. This is the fight, uh, flee. Um, well, there's another F in there that uh, is related to your autonomic nervous system, your sympathetic nervous system, but we don't want to talk about that. That's fight or flight. And what happens with fight or flight? Huge things that happen with autonomic. Pupils dilate. Mu uh, the blood goes away from your stomach. 
That's why you get a feeling in the pit of your stomach when you're nervous. Your body says, you know what? We don't need to digest right now. I might need to punch somebody or kick somebody, right? You think, well, I don't need to fix my watch right now. I might need to punch somebody. So the, the uh, blood goes to your big muscles and goes away from your small muscles. Pupils dilate so that um, you can see real well, all that stuff. That's your autonomic nervous system. So your autonomic nervous system kicks in. All those things happen. You are ready to punch somebody or run away from somebody or do something else, which we don't want to talk about. And then here's how I remember the parasympathetic. So if you've ever almost gotten into an accident or did get into an accident, what happens is your autonomic ner nervous system kicks in, hormones kick in, all this other stuff. And then you, you were able to calm down right away, right? No. What will happen is you'll start shaking and you get nervous and it takes you a while to come back down, right? It takes you a while to come back down like a parachute. The parasympathetic nervous system is like a parachute that brings you back down to normal. So your sympathetic nervous system will shoot you in the air like a rocket. Ah! And then that's your sympathetic. And then your autonomic brings you back down and it calms you, brings you back down to earth like a parachute. Okay. Oops, it's not. There we go. So we got the central nervous system is the spine and the brain. This is just a review. Spine controls reflexes. There are certain things that happen that don't even go up to your brain. Um, if you cut yourself or something like that, often it, your central nervous system will say, you know what, we don't have time to get it to the brain. We need to get that hand to move away from there. The brain controls your voluntary movements, and your, we'll talk a lot. It's much more complex than that, obviously, but we think of that with the central nervous system. The peripherals on the outside, we're reviewing. This delivers information to my hand from the central nervous system. If my brain says, I want my right hand to move, something needs to deliver it. That's your peripheral nervous system. Um, your somatic nervous system is in your body, controlled by your motor cortex, which we'll learn about it coming up in a little bit. Uh, we have an afferent signal, uh, which goes in, and then we have an efferent signal, which gets the F out. Mr. Davis has that great mnemonic, same sensory is afferent neurons, motor is efferent neurons, but which one goes in and which one goes out? My mnemonic is get the F out. Um, motor neurons get the F out. Okay. Um, autonomic, you are not conscious of it, which we've talked about. It's controlled by your brainstem. We're going to be talking about the brain a lot coming up, I promise. And then um, sympathetic shoots you up. Parasympathetic brings you down like a uh, parachute. Okay, um, this probably will be the last slide. We're really making a big shift right now because we've talked about, and I've, uh, I've thought it'd be funny to get a brain tattooed on the top of my head. Um, it would really help, right? Uh, but the idea is there are a lot of neurons going on up here in your skull. There's a lot of neurons going on down here, and they deliver other types of messages. So if your neurons are electrical messages, now we're talking about chemicals. The endocrine system is those chemicals that go through your blood. That is adrenaline. That is testosterone. That is estrogen. And those do not move quickly. Some of your neurons can fire multiple times a second. Your endocrine system is very slow moving very slow moving this this is not something that goes with so this is basically how you feel during a day might be your endocrine system how you feel in a split second is going to be your nervous system so and we're going to talk about there is a gland that is the conduit so you have your nervous system up here and i'm way oversimplifying it and then you have your endocrine system down here and there's one gland that connects them and we're going to talk about that the master gland is the pituitary gland this is producing hormones this is a chemical signal in your blood and basically it says this is what's going to happen for the rest of your um, glands it also produces human growth hormone and oxytocin and oxytocin i believe they talk about it in your book o oxytocin is a fascinating hormone because um, while well, human growth hormone obviously it helps you grow oxytocin is what they call the love hormone which is really interesting because um, oxytocin is is released a lot when a mother is breastfeeding and when she looks at her child the child looks at her there's this love this connection that is super strong so they have called oxytocin the love hormone which is true but what's also true about it is it's also a hormone that creates a lot of aggression. And you're thinking, dude, how does it create love and aggression? Think about this. Let's say you've got your baby and oxytocin is flowing through your veins and somebody comes up and um, wants to harm your baby. Hmm. So what it does 
Oxytocin makes you love the people around you. It just, you bring them in. And then outsiders, how do you feel about outsiders when you've got your people here? It's like, you better watch out. I will fight to the death for these people that I love. So what they find is oxytocin has this weird duality. It makes you love these people and it makes you very, very leery of outsiders. Interesting stuff, but it's your pituitary gland. And it's super, super tiny. You can't even really see it right here. Um, we'll, we'll look some more at the brain. But basically your brain has to see Send information to your endocrine system, which is those chemicals that go through your body, and it goes through the pituitary. So we go, um, hypothalamus is in your brain, pituitary is in your endocrine system. That's the connection. So your brain says, I need to send information to the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus speaks pituitary, right? The other parts of your brain don't speak pituitary, but your hypothalamus does. Um, so the uh, pituitary then sends information out to the endocrine system. I've told myself I wouldn't go 10 minutes. It's already 10 and a half. I apologize. Take it away, Mr. Davis.